Hi, my name is Nat from Living the Dream Permaculture and today I'm going to talk to you about some of my favourite gardening books. I was recently asked if I could share this, so I thought I'd make a video and hopefully it'll help some other people who want to expand their library um, to learn how to grow their own food, preserve their own food um, and learn about permaculture. So I'm going to start off with the first book I ever bought. I bought this about 13 years ago. Um, I got it off eBay. It was a couple of bucks delivered and I only bought it because it was so cheap and it's turned out to be one of the best investments that I've ever made. You can still get this book because I have checked recently for someone else. And why I love this book so much, it's based in Tasmania, which has a, which has a similar climate to um, me here in Gippsland. Uh, Victoria. I'm in a cool temperate climate so I would only recommend this for people who um, garden in a cooler area. This is not something you'd use in Northern Australia. Um, and what I love about it is that it's all organic um, and it teaches you how to grow each individual thing. So here we have lettuce and I'll talk about how to grow it um, and the conditions that, that it likes and all that sort of stuff. I've read this so many times um, and I enjoy it and learn something new from it each time. This is something that I'll definitely have in my library if you live in a cool temperate area. The next book that I'm going to talk about is this one that I got from the library. It's called Soil Food. And um, if you really want to improve your soil, something like this would be really awesome for you. Um, in the beginning, she talks about all the different nutrients um, and elements and how they impact plant growth and um, soil health and it's really really interesting um, she also talks about sources um, and how to naturally put that stuff into your soil and then we talk about 1372 ways to add fertility to your soil so it's a really fantastic book um, full of great ideas and if you are passionate about soil have a read of this. The next couple of books are from Pat Colby. Um, there's another one of her books that I really want to get and it's called um, Cattle Care, Natural Cattle, Natural Cattle Care. So we've got natural farming and natural sheep care and basically these go through um, soil health, regenerative farming, trees, um, minerals and vitamins and remedies. So if you want to farm naturally, um, this is a really good book. It talks about minerals um, and how to remineralize the land. Um, she uses different techni techniques to other people, um, but I find it really interesting. And the sheep one's really awesome because she's got um, diseases and illnesses and how to um, remedy that with minerals or naturally. So um, we've used this quite a lot. And that's why we want to get the cattle one because we would like to look up cattle diseases if that was to ever happen to us and be able to fix it um, before it became an issue. Also a local book. Um, I do love local because when I'm reading about it, I can really um, put that knowledge to use on my land. Um, this lady lives about 30 minutes away over the mountain ranges and she talks about all the different weeds and how to use them. Um, let's find something. Um, let's have a look. Comfrey or rocket salad. Um, she talks about how to um, preserve nasturtiums and vinegar. Um, how to use it for health, controlling weeds, um, and how to eat them and how to identify them. So I found that really um, useful in my area, especially if you're foraging, um, but also on farmland because you get a whole lot of weeds out here and sometimes you don't know what they are, you don't know if they're poisonous, and you don't know if you can eat them or not. Um, so that's been um, really interesting, really eye-opening because there's a heap of weeds that we have here that I didn't realise you could eat or use as a stock fodder um, that's really beneficial. Something like chickweed, for example, really high in protein in the seeds similar to quinoa or related to quinoa and um, yeah it's called fat hen another name for it's fat hen so um, it's called fat hen for a reason because it really puts on the weight um, these books are all permaculture books 
So we've got the first three permaculture books that were ever written. So the first one ever written was Permaculture One, which is when David was learning under Bill. Um, Bill was the tutor um, at the university that David was studying at. And this was the book that he wrote as part of his um, sustainable degree. Um, I can't remember exactly what that degree was, but it was something in sustainable, sustainability. And so permaculture evolved from that. Um, and then Permaculture 2 was written by Bill, um, delving a little bit deeper, and then Introduction to Permaculture. So these are the first ones I would recommend for beginners that want to learn uh, more about permaculture. And then um, the next one I would suggest, especially if you're on farmland, is the Earth User's Guide um, to Permaculture. And this is by Rosemary Morrow, who is up in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. Slightly different climate to me, um, or not that much different, but slightly different. Um, but she's got some different ideas in here and it's presented really nicely. Um, you can see there that the illustrations are gorgeous um, and really um, helpful if you're creating your own plan or just um, trying to implement some ideas on your own property. This isn't bad for urban, but this is probably better for rural. Next one, I would suggest if you are wanting to do your PDC or get into permaculture design is the basics of permaculture design. This helped me heaps during my PDC and basically talks you through all the equipment you need um, and where to get started in your design. So base maps, sector analysis, and then all the other elements that you're going to implement um, in your design. So it just talks you through that and I found this really useful. So this would only um, be useful for people who are wanting to design. I wouldn't recommend this for someone who's just a hobby perm permie. Um, that is someone who wants to get into permaculture as a business. As with this book, um, the designer's manual. This touches on just about everything you'll ever need in your permaculture design. This is called the Black Book. Um, I use this quite a bit in my PDC just to kind of get ideas and then I'd go elsewhere to dive deeper into those ideas. For example, he touches on Keyline, which a lot of permaculture books do. Um, and then you can kind of go to PA Yeoman stuff and dive even deeper into um, what Keyline is and how to implement it on your property. But this is full of so much good stuff. Um, very expensive and hard to get. But um, if you are wanting to use permaculture as a means of uh, income source, then some, having a resource like this on your shelf um, is really helpful. So it goes through concepts in theme of design, methods of design, patterns and understanding them, um, climate, trees and their energy transactions, water, soils, earthworking and earth resources, the tropics, dry lands, humid cool to cool climates, aquaculture and then strategies of an alternative um, global nation. So it's over 500 pages and it's pretty pretty good book to have if you want to um, keep referring back to different ideas. The next books that I'm going to show you are more cooking style books. This is the second book that I bought, um, actually Paul bought me this for Christmas. And it's from Stephanie Alexander, who does the Kitchen Garden Foundation. Um, and this one's called Kitchen Garden Companion. And in here, she lists um, a whole lot of stuff. All the gardening equipment you need, different methods of gardening, kitchen equipment. Um, and she has a really useful chart on when to grow um, certain things. So what time of year and the different climates. And then she goes alphabetically through a heap of different veggies, quite a lot of veggies. I don't think I've found anything that I've grown that she hasn't cooked with. So um, I'd say it's really comp comprehensive. Um, let me try and find the start of one. So we have Asian greens. She talks about um, if they're an annual perennial, Soil types, soil preparation, climate, position, when to plant, water requirements, how to plant, successive planting, when to fertilise, harvest period, pests and organic control, companion planting, special information 
and quantities to plant for families of four. And then you turn the page and it's got more information about all that. So growing and harvesting, container planting, preparing and sharing, um, especially for kids. So she does do a lot of, um, like I said, kitchen gardens at school. So um, she's really passionate about teaching kids how to grow and cook their own food. Um, and then she goes into recipes, which is really useful for when you have um, a heap of something in your garden and you're stuck for ideas of what to cook. It's nice to open up the book and be inspired with all of these ideas. And then, yeah, so alphabetical and all the veg and all the fruit you could ever want. So I really enjoyed that as a resource. I got this one for an op shop uh, for a couple of bucks and it's the same sort of principle except not as detailed. He um, orders his by seasons and then he has like the cabbage family, carrots and beets, climbing beans, courgettes, onions, peas and broad beans, pizza, potatoes, strawberries, summer salad and tomatoes. Now he's obviously in England because Jamie Oliver is from England. Um, so for me I have to rethink the seasons and the time of year that he suggests to plant stuff. Um, also, I can't grow broad, broad beans in summer, so um, for me that's an autumn, sorry, uh, late winter and spring crop, not the summer crop. Um, but he's got some awesome recipes in here and that's why I've got it. Not so much for the gar gardening advice, but for the recipes because his recipes are really awesome, easy to follow and yummy. Um, for Australia, you've got the Commons, um, which is from Matthew Evans. Very similar to Jamie at home, but his recipes are a bit more fancy. Um, what I also liked about it was that he's got a little bit of a diary in here. So he'll talk about what's happening on his farm at that particular time, point in time. And um, his recipes are really awesome, but fancier. So um, not as easy as Jamie's, but still delicious. His other book, The Gourmet Farmer, um, which comes from his TV show, I guess, um, is also written, um, Nick Haddo's in here and Ross O'Meara. Um, this is not so much veggie, um, but it's more meat and dairy and how you would preserve them into delicious things like cheese and salami, ham, sausages. Um, so that's why I've got this one. Um, there are a few veggie dishes in here but it's more so charcuterie um, but if you are on a farm and you're um, slaughtering your own animals and want to make charcuterie this is a really good beginner's book for that the cheeses in here are soft cheeses not so much hard cheeses um, but there are other books for hard cheeses and if you do need to find a good book for hard cheeses let me know because I've got one that was recommended I haven't used the recipes or all the recipes in it because um, I'm still learning how to make cheese and yeah. <laughs> now for some more nitty gritty books, books that give you um, lots and lots of technical information about growing. Um, I got these from op shops, so I'm not sure if you can find them easily or not, but they've been really cool. Um, Horticulture Australia, basically it's a reference, complete reference for the horticultural industry and basically it goes through um, growing, planting, harvesting. I um, can't remember if this one teaches you how to propagate by cuttings as well. But this is a nice technical book when we need to reference, um, you know, either an issue that we're having in the orchard or with other trees um, or how to graft or how to propagate trees that aren't as easy to propagate as others. Um, the Ultimate Australian Gardening Book, great for referencing plants that we don't know much about um, in design and in um, on, 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 and on our property, sorry. Um, so it tells you all the different species here. We've got clistamons and all the different types. So that's just a nice little handy book. Um, and then the Royal Horticultural um, Studies Concise Inclusive encyclopedia of gardening techniques so this has got your grafting um, propagating and all that sort of stuff if you want to go into more details this is not just sowing seeds this is um, serious plant propagation which we're trying to learn more about 
And the last two things that I would recommend um, are two books on seed saving. So I've just ordered these books. One is called the um, Seed Savers Manual and the other one's the Seed Savers Handbook. I'll put the proper na um, names down below and I'll also add the names of these books down below. But basically one's an Australian version and one's not, um, but they tell you how to save seeds, they tell you how far away to plant different species, um, to stop cross-pollination, timing to stop cross-pollination um, and proper harvesting um, and storage techniques for all your seeds. I read um, the manual before and it's full of amazing information, um, but it's something that I'd love to have on my shelf to quickly reference because it's something like this yellow book that I'd use a lot of um, and just keep, I don't know where I put it, but I'd keep going back to it and referencing, um, it's hiding under there, <laughs> referencing um, techniques and stuff like that because um, there's a lot of information in there and a lot of it's new for me um, and it's something I want to get really good at so we can be self-sufficient in our seed production. So yeah, I think really useful to have on your shelf. So I think my top ones would be if you were to only buy a couple of books, definitely that book. And I'd say that one too, if you were to get two books and if you were to get one permaculture book, I'd get the Earth User's Guide. So that will be my top top three. This one's just really, really good, full of so much information about how to grow um, all your own food. This one's um, just great for permaculture design and different principles in there. And then this one will tell you successive planting and um, how much to plant for your family, but also great ways to use up everything that you harvest from your garden. So I hope this helps you and um, that you've found some new books to add to your stash. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.